Okay, so here is an example of an oblique. So I'm actually just going to use the same equation we used on the first video, which was x squared plus x minus 3 and x plus 4. So there's our equation. So the first step, uh, as always, is to find your horizontal asymptotes. In this case, we see that the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. So we know that it's not going to be a horizontal asymptote, but an oblique asymptote. But we still need to find it. So we do that by doing our division. And so we say x plus 4 and do our x minus plus x minus 3. And so we say, um, what do we do to get this x to be a square? We say multiply by x. So x times x is x squared, and x times 4 is ne uh, sorry positive plus 4. And we don't have anything, so I'm just going to put a 0 on there. Now, um, x, let's see here. Then we do our subtraction, so that is 0. x minus 4x, don't have that x in there. x minus 4x is negative 3x and negative 3 minus 0 is still negative 3. Now, how much does this x plus 4 go into this? Well, we need to get our x to be a negative 3, so we say it goes in negative 3 times. So x times negative 3 is negative 3x. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Now, negative 3x minus a negative 3x is going to be 0, because it's really negative 3x plus 3x, right? So that's a 0. And negative 3 minus a negative 12 is actually 3 plus 12, negative 3 plus 12, which is going to be positive 9. So this is our remainder, as we've talked about. And your remainder would really be um, numerically, not just an R, but numerically would be 9 over this, um, over the uh, divisor. So what we care, which would then, again, which would be like this, it would be 9 over x plus 4. And that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, so that is going to go away to zero as we're talking about in behavior. So that really, we don't really care about that because we're talking about horizontal asymptotes right now. So right now we can just ignore this and just take our uh, oblique asymptote. So this is actually the equation of the oblique asymptote. Uh, maybe I'll use a different color, but I can't really see that. So uh, I'll put an H and put it in quotes because it's really not a horizontal. Um, but it's uh, oblique, so it, the equation for that is y equals x minus 3. Now we need to find our vertical asymptotes. So our vertical asymptotes we find by deciding when this will not, um, what, when the denominator will equal 0. So we say 0 equals x plus 4. Then we say, uh, then we move our, our 4 over, so we have negative 4. Subtract 4 from both sides and say when x equals negative 4, we will get a vertical asymptote. And that makes sense. If we plug a negative 4 in here, that will be 0. So we can't divide by 0. So our vertical asymptote will be x equals 0. Now we need to find, um, we can actually start drawing a picture. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll draw this as big as I can. So we know that our vertical, oops, I wrote this wrong, is at negative 4. Because when we plug our negative 4 in, this will go to 0. So, um, so at negative 4, we have a vertical asymptote. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And so that's where we have our vertical asymptote. And so I'll just use this as the guide. So I did our vertical, I plotted our vertical one first, that's okay. And then our horizontal is at x equals 3, y equals x equals 3. So that's actually a function. So how do you graph a function? Well, you do your y-intercept, which is uh, negative 3, 1, 2, 3. And then you um, look at the, the slope, which is actually going to be 1. So it's just going to be over 1, up 1. So I'm going to now use this to give me a better job. It's going to be here. I might need to draw this, or call this. together. I ran out of a little bit of space here, so we'll 
use the boards in conjunction. So you should be able to still see that. So this is going to come down, and this is going to continue on this way. And this is going to come down. Like that. Okay, now we need to find our x-intercepts and our y-intercepts. And we do that by... I'm going to do that right here. So I don't have very much room, and we need to... All that. I'll actually just slide this up out of the way for a second. So our x-intercepts we get um, is when we set the whole thing equal to zero. So zero equals x squared plus x minus three all over x plus four. Well, and what happens is this multiplied over here will go away and um, then we get 0 equals x squared plus x minus 3. And you would need to use the quadratic equation to find that, uh, what the roots are of that, and I'll use my calculator real quick here. They're actually really ugly roots. Um, they're actually, the roots are one half negative one half minus one half times the root, square root of 13. So it's actually really ugly. Um, apologize for that. I thought this was a nice example. but um, And then the other one is just the same, it's actually going to be, it's, it's one half, it's negative one half plus one half root 13. So that's uh, really ugly, but you can see that this is going to be root 13 is a little bit more than four times half, so but two, so it's going to be a, um, positive number and this is going to be a negative number so um, like I said this is about three sorry this is a less than four and that's half so that's going to be negative or sorry that's going to be positive and this is going to be a negative number but they're a little bit so we're in here somewhere actually we'll use a different color So that's where our x-intercept is, and now we need to figure out where our y-intercept is. We get our y-intercept by plugging a 0 in. So you get 0. You plug in 0 squared plus 0 minus 3 over 0 plus 4. And you can see that, that equally comes out easily comes out to negative three fourths. So that's our y-intercept. So I'll come and plot that. So negative three fourths is in here somewhere. And then what happens is you actually you can then plot plot plug in some other numbers. But what happens is is you actually get something that looks like this. Something that's coming down here and swings through and gets really, really close to that. And also down in this place down here, you can plug in numbers to be more accurate, but it looks like that. So to get the domain and range of this guy, your range, sorry, let's do domain first. Your domain is going to be all real numbers except for this vertical asymptote, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. So it's all real numbers on um, the domain is all real numbers from negative infinity to positive no infinity, except for 4, negative 4. And then our domain, sorry, our range, this is one place that Brother Piper doesn't require you to actually see 
um, to know exactly what your range is because there's this huge band not not too huge but there's this band in here that um, there's no range because you have all these numbers coming here and all these numbers down here but there's this band and so what he asks of you is to just go ahead and mention that there's a band and potentially even say about um, negative one two and, and you know if you actually graph this you could see where that would actually be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So about that. Just mention that it's all real numbers except for that band. Calculus will actually show you, and uh, you can figure out what that minimum point is and what this maximum point is here, and you could actually um, do that very easily in calculus. So, um, or pr relatively easily um, in that. A lot easier than with what the tools we have now. So, um, just mention on the range that there it's all real numbers except for that band that there's missing right there so i hope that works out um, does that should catch you up enough to do your homework